Welcome to the Elvis Presley channel. They were not in a relationship any more, but still, she continued to speak of him with nothing but fondness and affection long after his death, and he continued to send her flowers on her every opening till his death. That's what we call love. How did Anne Margaret predict Elvis's death? Make sure to watch the video until the end, and if you are new here, don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Elvis Presley channel. Elvis Presley and Anne Margaret's lasting relationship after their breakup. Elvis Presley is unquestionably a legend. His influence on rock and roll is still felt today, and his music continues to be enjoyed by people all over the world. However, Presley was also a private man who guarded many secrets. Elvis had several fixations throughout his life, including his problematic relationships, ranging from his impetuous attitude to a strange diet, his relationship with Anne Margaret, whom he eventually left to marry his young fiancée Priscilla, is one such example. Anne Margaret and Elvis had a different kind of relationship. Anne Margaret was the most important woman in Elvis Presley's life, aside from his family. She became the most famous of Presley's leading ladies during his Hollywood career, after starring opposite him in Viva Las Vegas in 1963. Presley's unique life story, which ended so tragically in 1977, has a fairy tale interlude in the intimate bond they maintained throughout the years. Elvis Presley first met the Swedish immigrant on a sound stage at Radio Recorder's studio in Hollywood in early July 1963. They were introduced to one another and the press the following day as the stars of MGM's upcoming picture, Viva Las Vegas. It was Presley's 14th picture at the age of 28 while Anne Margaret's career was just getting started at the age of 22. Her last film, Bye Bye Birdie, which was released just three months before she started shooting on Viva Las Vegas, launched her to stardom. Elvis discovered a woman that looked precisely like him, and she was dubbed the female version of Elvis. She was the only one who could understand Elvis's vulnerable side, but he had to keep his promise to marry Priscilla. After their affair ended, Elvis Presley maintained contact with Anne Margaret and the two remained close friends. Elvis continued to send Anne Margaret flowers in the shape of a guitar every time she opened her program for the rest of his life and subsequently revealed that he still loved her. However, Anne Margaret noted that there was no floral arrangement this time when she arrived at the Hilton on August 15, 1977. She called Graceland to ask if anything was wrong and she found out about Elvis's death before the news broke. During an interview, Charlie Rose asked Anne Margaret, He sent flowers and you knew he was dead when the flowers didn't arrive. He'd send you flowers whenever you had a new engagement in the shape of a guitar. It was unreal. It was just unreal, because I'm really private, and he was too, she replied. In this era, it sounds unbelievable how someone can remain a loyal friend after a breakup but their relationship was unique and beautiful, and by the end of this video you will also say the same, so keep watching till the end. After meeting in 1964 while filming Viva Las Vegas, Anne Margaret and Elvis Presley had a special bond. They spent nearly every waking hour of every day together. Since then Anne Margaret has described her relationship with the King as an unbridled force that she couldn't stop. But it did in the end. Viva Las Vegas, directed by George Sidney, was one of Presley's most ambitious projects. Presley was paired with someone who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and was truly interesting enough in her own right that the viewers felt some tension in the romantic relationship in Viva Las Vegas. They both sensed a kindred soul in the other from the moment they met. They each said something along those lines. In Viva Las Vegas, Anne Margaret captivated Elvis in such a way that everyone around them noticed that there was something different, something genuine about their performance. He was always depicted as a laid-back person surrounded by adoring women, and while he was always entertaining, it was the fire he brought to the table that made him so watchable and unmistakable. Elvis was a stunner without a doubt, but the way she adored him in the movies, the way she gushed over him, made him come alive, made him burst with even more heat the type he couldn't hide. 
Overall, it was a breeze to shoot. They drove the film's producers crazy by risking their lives late at night riding motorcycles like daredevils, and there's a motorcycling segment in Viva Las Vegas as well. Both kept dating after the filming of Viva Las Vegas was completed. Elvis started to give Anne Margaret silly nicknames, a typical sign of his love. Rusty, Thumper, Scooby and Bunny. Elvis's nickname for her was Ammo. Very few women in Elvis's life meant as much to him as Anne Margaret. Elvis Presley had a very humble upbringing, which was criticised by controversial author Albert Goldman in his biography of The Hound Dog Singer. Elvis also learned early on to remain quiet and distant, because he was taunted any time he wore his favourite bright colours. And Margaret, on the other hand, put him at ease. They were both the same. Elvis discovered a reflection of himself that allowed him to be genuine, to be himself. And Margaret lived with her parents for the duration of their relationship, and Elvis would come over, have dinner with her family, and do everything a good old-fashioned boyfriend should do. And Margaret and Elvis's affection for each other showed no signs of fading. With time it grew stronger, and they learned to trust each other. As Elvis and Anne Margaret grew closer, they began to spend more time alone. Elvis opened up to her during their private time together, possibly more than he had ever done with anyone else in his life. Elvis told her about his dreams, desires, hopes, wounds, wants and flaws. Elvis, who was known for his shyness, chose to be open with her. But of course there was one issue with their relationship, Priscilla Presley. At the time Priscilla had been living at Graceland for a while, and had only followed Elvis to the USA for two years. Behind the scenes Elvis had promised to eventually marry Priscilla, but his attention had been diverted for just over a year. When Elvis would visit home he would often speak with Anne Margaret over the phone, but would employ some cunning tactics to keep the call secret. The main ploy was that Anne Margaret would call and tell Elvis's housekeeper that Thumper was calling. After just over a year of being together, Elvis's long-term girlfriend, Priscilla Presley, found out about his secret relationship with Anne Margaret. Priscilla was obviously furious, and Elvis ended the affair soon after. Before long, the pair cut off contact with one another. Eventually, Elvis chose Priscilla. The two wed in 1967. Anne Margaret got hitched to American producer Roger Smith on May 8, 1967, exactly one week after Elvis married Priscilla. On the other hand, Elvis remained a loyal friend of Anne Margaret, though she was also happily married then. Anne Margaret and Elvis Presley were very close, even after their affair had ended. While his affair with Anne Margaret was clearly a sore spot for Priscilla Presley, the two kept in touch. Presley maintained an interest in her career, making sure she knew he supported her. In fact, Anne Margaret even claimed that Presley went back to Priscilla Presley out of obligation, and that he'd have preferred to stay with her. Shortly after each of their respective weddings, Anne Margaret and Elvis met up again in Las Vegas. At Smith's urging, she attempted to further her career with a five-week live engagement at the Riviera Hotel. The cabaret act was a fantastic success, earning reviews from critics and audiences. Elvis met up with her backstage to congratulate her. He also sent her a guitar-shaped flower arrangement for opening night that became their tradition. He continued the practice for all of her Las Vegas openings for the rest of his life. And Margaret recalled that the King of Rock and Roll headed into her dressing room and shut the door behind him. Their eyes met and they felt the spark. After Elvis congratulated her on her success, and Margaret began to thank him. Instead he cut her off and began to thank her. His smile faded, she remembered, and his eyes lost their playfulness and turned serious. He went on to thank her for the happiness she brought into his life. Elvis then stepped forward and dropped to one knee. Taking both her hands in his own, he told her exactly how he still felt about her. While she already knew that he still had feelings for her, she admitted she was touched to hear his sweet words. She was always on his radar. It didn't work out between Elvis and Anne Margaret, but for the rest of his life she was in the deepest part of his heart. When Elvis opened at the International Hotel on July 31, 1969, Anne Margaret was in the audience, according to Lamar Fike. 
Throughout the 70s, both would attend the other's Las Vegas shows when possible and visit with each other afterward. In the 70s, both would struggle with medication dependencies, while Elvis abused prescription medications and Margaret fought alcohol addiction. I reached a point where my day and nights blended into one continuous foggy state of inebriation, she explained. I'd drink a fifth of scotch, pass out, wake up, drink some more, and pass out again. I suffered periods that I couldn't remember. And Margaret overcame her addiction, but Elvis did not. In the 1970s, Anne Margaret performed a regular residency slot in Las Vegas. Elvis attended one of these shows before going to a star-studded after-party at the Las Vegas Hilton, where they chatted about old times. She also had a facial injury. Elvis couldn't stop himself from calling Anne Margaret's hotel room. After seeing her for the first time in years, he wanted to speak to her privately. Elvis told Anne Margaret she looked wonderful and that he was happy to have seen her during her recovery. But then things took a turn. But then his tone changed, and margaret recalled the event in her memoir, My Story, saying he was lonely. He asked if he could see me. It wasn't a question I'd anticipated since the afternoon, but hoped that he wouldn't really ask. And margaret refused. After all, she was married. She simply responded, You know I can't. Elvis then heartbreakingly opened up to her, According to the Bye Bye Birdie star, Elvis told her he understood, but he wanted to let her know that he still felt the same. The King's sentiments about being lonely were most likely confessed after his wife Priscilla had moved out of Graceland earlier that year to a two-bedroom apartment. His divorce from Priscilla was finalised months later, on October 9, 1973. In early 1977 she heard rumours about Elvis's poor health. When Joe Esposito came to her show at the Tropicana in Las Vegas, she asked him how Elvis was doing. Don't worry, he told her, everything's fine. There's a few problems, but we're taking care of them. The King of Rock and Roll always sent Anne Margaret a guitar-shaped bouquet of flowers at her live performances till his death, and he often went to see her performance in person. The lovers remained friends, and one day Margaret found out that her loyal friend was gone forever. Margaret revealed the heartbreaking way she discovered Elvis had died. On August 15, 1977, Margaret didn't receive flowers on opening night for the first time in ten years, and Margaret had not seen the star for years, but their relationship still lived on in secret. It was for the first time in ten years that there was no flower arrangement or telegram from Elvis, and Margaret knew something was wrong. She knew he wouldn't stop sending her gifts for no reason. Early the next morning, Anne Margaret received a phone call from Joe Esposito, Elvis's road manager and close friend. He told Anne Margaret, He's dead. He also told her Graceland was going to be a media circus in the days that followed, but she was of course invited to his funeral, which was due to take place in the coming days. She simply replied, I'm coming. So yes, Elvis Presley hadn't sent her flowers, because he passed away. And margaret arrived at Graceland, to the sound of moaning fans outside the gates of the star's famous residence. The funeral procession was just hours away from beginning, an event that was open to all fans of Elvis. Thousands of people arrived and lined the streets to see the King one last time, before he was buried for good. But Anne margaret didn't arrive to see Elvis's fans. She came to pay her respects to the king. When she arrived at Graceland, she and Elvis's father Vernon embraced, and margaret recalled the event in her memoir, My Story. She wrote, There was so much to say, to recount, but instead we cried. In that moment of sorrow between Elvis's father and his ex-lover, Vernon decided to deliver one final message to Anne margaret Vernon whispered to her, He was so proud of you. And margaret attended the funeral dutifully and paid her final respects to the star with strength. She didn't make a scene and gave Elvis's ex-wife Priscilla Presley and his daughter Lisa Marie Presley the space they required. She never forgot him, though, and has since been praising him ever since his death. She often called him incredibly kind and talented. That touching moment between Anne margaret and Vernon was far from their last conversation about Elvis. 
Three months later, Elvis's father and Colonel Parker contacted her and asked her to host Memories of Elvis, a two-hour NBC homage to the King. It was one of the most difficult wrenching jobs she had ever done, she said. And Margaret learned of Vernon's critical illness in early 1979, almost two years after Elvis's death. To see him, she travelled to Memphis, Tennessee. She recalled, We had a good visit, laughing and crying and trading stories. Eventually he told her how much he missed his son, and Margaret replied, I miss him too. For her loving friend, she remained in contact with his father and to comfort him. She occasionally called Vernon leading up to his death on June 26, 1979. There is no doubt that Elvis and Anne Margaret were faithful friends. Despite all that she and Elvis had gone through, their friendship is everlasting and will always be remembered by their fans. Don't you think so? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Elvis and Anne Margaret truly shared a special bond. If you also have this question in mind, could Anne Margaret save Elvis Presley? Watch this video and find out.